Ah, Dark Phoenix. This movie sucks. I wanted to talk about the X-Men films for a moment and why I think the MCU shouldn't touch the Dark Phoenix saga with a 10-foot pole, by using this as a basis. Everyone talks about the Dark Phoenix saga as the X-Men story, or one of the greats, right up there with God Loves Man Kills or Days of Future Past. The two film adaptations of Dark Phoenix share one simple problem. Nobody cares about Jean Grey. What exactly does she do in The Last Stand? She stares and disintegrates things. She's out of focus for half the movie, possibly way more. This is because we had to splice the Dark Phoenix Saga storyline with the Mutant Cure storyline. And it did neither of them justice. It's like someone wrote a draft for Dark Phoenix, and then turned around in the next room, wrote a draft for the Mutant Cure storyline. And then they threw them both into the same pile and threw them in a shredder. And then they shifted through that shredder junk and taped them together. And this was the script that got spat out. Okay, so what was the problem with Dark Phoenix, their second attempt at doing this theatrically? A problem lies with the nature of adapting Dark Phoenix Saga as a whole. The Dark Phoenix Saga isn't the main storyline. It is actually a sequel to the lesser-known Phoenix Saga, and this is important because it highlights the issues with the Dark Phoenix film itself. You don't need to adapt the Phoenix Saga. But if you give zero craps about Jean Grey, then why should you care about her being possessed by a space bird, or her flat out losing her mind? It makes no sense. The foundation of Dark Phoenix was X-Men Apocalypse, and it was an apocalyptic nightmare in terms of narrative cohesion. Did they want to focus primarily on Raven, Charles, Eric, and Alex, and their conflict? I mean, it certainly wants you to care about Magneto losing his family again. And it also wants you to care about whatever the hell Mystique is doing in Eastern Europe. And let's not forget Apocalypse and his kooky quartet. And it also clearly wants you to focus on a new generation of X-Men, their relationships to each other, and how they're going to be the face of a franchise going forward. So yeah, lots of threads, very little focus. When we had Jean Grey go full Phoenix, we're left with, who cares about this version of Jean Grey? Who really cares about this version of Jean Grey? Who even is this version of Jean Grey? At least when the animated series did the Dark Phoenix Saga, we didn't do it until 40 episodes in. And meanwhile, X-Men Evolution took five seasons to do it. I say five seasons to do it because it set it up at the end of season four and then got immediately cancelled. Wolverine and the X-Men tried to jump straight into the Phoenix Saga, and guess what? That's considered one of the weaker parts of that show. Oh, and they adapted Ultimate Phoenix Saga, which isn't as good as the original. Meanwhile, the X-Men anime used it as backstory, which, okay, at least that is SOMETHING new. It's Storytelling 101. If your setup is on an unstable foundation, then prepare to see your circus tent come crashing down. Then there's the problems with the story in general and telling it. It was legendary for its time, but how many times have you heard the plot beats? A character grows too powerful for their own good, grows evil, and then dies in a heroic sacrifice. I think Chilling Adventures of Sabrina made a joke about this. And if you tilt your head funny, WandaVision already did a reasonable adaptation of a Dark Phoenix saga without the death count of billions because of a planet busting. I think my biggest issue with the Dark Phoenix Saga being the big Jean Grey storyline is that we end up ignoring everything else about her in order to jump straight into the cosmic chicken. I mean, give her some hobbies. Or, if you want to do the Dark Phoenix Saga, try being creative. Have her children come in and make the Dark Phoenix Saga a family affair. Imagine the horror of children seeing their own mother slowly lose her grip on reality and becoming a destroyer of worlds. There's many reasons why I don't want the MCU to do the storyline other than just adaptation fatigue. Because in that adaptation fatigue, you lose sight of Jean Grey being way more than just this stupid cosmic bird. Okay, whatever things do I have to complain about in this stupid movie while I'm here? Okay. But Dabari, they're boring. 
with Vuck in particular, everyone's going to make the joke, who the Vuck is that? Because I certainly did when I saw her name in the credits. They don't have defined powers at all. It's some kind of weird telekinesis and shape-shifting, which, okay, why? I mean, what's more insulting is that we had the Hellfire Club in the concept art, which would have helped them give some distinct personalities and powers. We have Shinobi Shaw, who I think controls gravity, Emma Frost, who is the telepath and the diamond, uh, Harry Leland, who uh, turns in... Wait, no, he doesn't turn into a werewolf. He actually has the gravity powers as well. We have the Red Lotus Gang, we had this werewolf guy whose name I forgot, and the Fenris Twins. Okay... So, distinct powers, because mutants tend to only have one power per person, and distinct looks. I'm surprised Vuck wasn't just Selene. You have a character whose whole deal is that she drinks life force in order to sustain her youth, and she also has delusions of being a goddess and being worshipped. It makes perfect sense for absorbing the energy of a phoenix, and the fact that she believes herself to be a goddess really makes her a much larger-than-life character, beyond mutants and humans. I mean, Apocalypse was like that as well, but you get the idea. Selene is the vain sorcerer's vampire. There's a lot of ways this could have worked. Just saying, giving these aliens some kind of defined powers might actually make them memorable, actually giving them defined designs, because I think they're just all in business suits. Really? This is awful. Will you call this memorable villainy? Ugh. They just blend in as background extras. Then there is how we completely miss the point of the Dark Phoenix saga as a whole. You see, after Jean kills Mystique, we get a conflict between Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants and the X-Men. That is a microcosm of things wrong with this adaptation. The lighting sucks, the action is mediocre, Jean is the weakest part here. Things happen to Jean, and surrounding Jean, but it barely feels like she has any feelings in this adaptation. I am very much aware that this battle over Jean happened in the comics and in every adaptation as well. The problem is that the battle for Jean happened at the climax of the Dark Phoenix Saga. The battle in this film happened right before the climax. It was its opening act, the setup for the punchline. And that, my friends, is the problem. Jean Grey is a prop. Everything about the Dark Phoenix Saga in a bad adaptation happens surrounding her, to the characters in the periphery. However, the relationships between them and Jean aren't at the forefront. That's what made the Dark Phoenix Saga good in the first place. You had the relationship with Jean, and then you had it affect everyone. Here, Jean just gets knocked out, and then she wakes up, gets Phoenix boosted, and then just kills Vuck. If Jean is your weakest part in this movie then I question why you would ever do a Dark Phoenix storyline at all. There is no reason to care about this incarnation of Jean Grey. What baseline has been established for Jean in this film? What relationships are being built upon, only to be torn down for drama? Okay, we killed off Mystique, so she was their beloved mentor who gave in a very phoned-in performance which immediately harmed the value this could have. And then Mystique is just a jerk to just about everyone, and I don't think they interact that much in the film, or in the last film either. There is very little in the way of substance. And when I say substance, I mean it. It is so visually unimpressive that it has been likened by my friends as looking like a dorm at a bankrupt university. And it is just painful to watch and listen to. But those are just my thoughts. Please consider liking, subscribing, tipping the channel on Kofi. This is Cyril signing off.